everyone. Welcome to FaceTime. I'm Ramsey Abushala. Today I'm joined by Memo Rodriguez of the Houston Dynamo. Memo, thanks for joining us. Yeah, th- thanks for having me, Ramsey. Um, how are you doing? I'm good, man. Um, so the last time we spoke, uh, I think it was like 2018. Uh, you were kind of on that verge of, of breaking through. Um, you, you have risen through the ranks, you know, a homegrown player through the USL, and then you're starting to get a little bit of regular playing time in MLS. But since then, uh, you know, you really skyrocketed and were able to have a huge year last year. So what was it that I told you that kind of lit that fire underneath? Uh, underneath <laughs> and uh, how come I didn't get a thank you uh, message? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I should have. I should have now. But um, I think uh, when we were talking, I think uh, I knew that patience was going to be the key to the, all this. Um, all the hard work that, that I've been putting in, mm-hmm. knew that I was going to get that opportunity. Um, obviously you don't get those opportunities every day and you just got to make the most of them. And then from there, you just got to keep growing as a player. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm sure that was, you know, it should have, must've felt great last year. I mean, this must've been a thrill for you. Right. Because I mean, we, when we were talking, you told me about, you know, your, your journey through Charleston and Rio Grande and just how, you know, things were, weren't always, you know, things weren't always bright for you. Right. It was, it was, it was tough times and just to kind of, be able to break through and and have all that hard work come to fruition. What, what was that feeling like for you as someone you know, who's been through it all? Yeah, exactly. Like like you mentioned, the Charleston days, the the Rio Grande days. Um, Rio Grande was a little bit better than Charleston, but I would say there's obviously that um, little whisper in the back of your mind saying, you know, you deserve to be on the first team. Yeah. Um, you should be playing on a daily basis. But, you know, I think I say it in most of the interviews that I'm in that I think that helped me in a way and motivated me to, to become a better soccer player on the field and, and especially off the field as well. Um, lit that fire in me that, you know, I want to prove to everybody that, you know, I deserve to be in the MLS and I deserve to be on the first team. Um, obviously, when you get, get to that point, uh, you start getting a little bit of minutes. Um, you're still not a full starter. So you're still, you're still growing as a player. You still got to be patient. Uh, but all that hard work and, and dedication and, and that patience really was key for me. And I'm going to continue to do that. Uh, also, you know, got to keep growing. Even though you're a starter, you, you know, I sky's the limit. Yeah. Uh, you never know. This, this career is not for granted. So, you know, you got to play the, this game like it's your last train, like it's your last training session. So I think all that and my, my family is really a support system that, you know, I always wanted. And, and what they give me and all I can do to repay them is, you know, give him my all in, in every game that I can. Yeah. There's, there's always that kind of a ladder to, to, to build up on and, and improve upon, especially in, in pro sports, right? Um, but when you were finally able to, to get into the MLS and, and get regular minutes and, and see the starting lineup a lot, uh, was there like a, any player, any certain moment that was kind of like a welcome to M- the MLS? Uh, was there any like like a player bossing you on the pitch or like a hard tackle here and there that just kind of like opened your eyes and was like, damn, like, uh, this is real, you know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, obviously when I did my debut, um, I can't remember the year, mm-hmm. um, we, we lost in new England. I think it was two zero or three zero. Um, I, re- I lost like four balls that I got. So I touched the ball probably four times and I lost about four. And, you know, me thinking, I think I was 18 years old or 19. I was young. Uh, I received the ball and I thought, you know, I checked my shoulder. I thought I had com- a lot of time and a lot of space to yeah. you know, control and give a long ball. Once I controlled that ball, there was two guys on <laughs> swarming me and there was a counterattack. They didn't score on their play. But, I mean, that day, you know, I realized, hey, you know, you think you're ready, mm-hmm. but you're actually not. You know, you still got yeah. a lot of development to do. Yeah. Uh, you still have a lot lot to grow. And I think that that moment really was an eye-opener for me. And I, And all I wanted to do is, you know, get on that training pitch and, you know, practice touching the ball fast one two touch because at the at the next level you don't have that time and space that you would have in an academy or in the US, yeah. usl level yeah. it's just the mls is just a whole hunt of the beast and you know i think i'm now prepared but i think i want to excel more and more game by game by game and help mm-hmm. my team in any way possible was yeah. there any like moment for you that was just like damn i made it i'm in the mls yeah, I think after scoring my first goal, um, oh, yeah. you know, it was pretty pretty surreal mo- moment for me. My family was there um, to watch it. I mean, it was actually pretty funny because I was in the, I was in the starter. I would get like 10 minutes, 15 minutes here and there. 
Um, sometimes it wouldn't make roster. And they, it was July, like, fourth weekend. Mm-hmm. Um, and we had a, a kit that had the USA oh, yeah, flag yeah. On, mm-hmm. on the back or on our numbers. And they only made one for me because, you know, I was in the starters. So mm-hmm. the starters had two kits just in case they had to switch in halftime or something like that. Um, and I wasn't going to keep that. Uh, so it was pretty cool that, you know, I scored. Yeah. And I was able to keep it. Our kit man was like, hey, hey, you scored. Who cares? You know, it's, it's your jersey, your first goal. Yeah. Um, keep it. Um, and I think after that first goal, I really was motivated to score many more. Um, just to get that feeling, you know, everybody – that plays sports, you know, scoring a touchdown, scoring a goal. There's no better feeling than yeah. than doing that for your team and and obviously getting the three points and, and winning a game in front of your hometown fans and family is you know the best feeling in the world. Yeah, so let's let's get into the training because uh, obviously you guys are gearing up for the MLS's back tournament. Uh, you, you guys head to Florida in in, in a, a few days. So uh, what's it been like just kind of being able to get back on the on the field with with the squad? And um, I know you guys are taking measures to to be cautious and everything like that, but. Um, just, just how's it felt to, to be able to get back on the pitch? Yeah, I think there's no better feeling than, than going back to full team training. Um, when quarantine was happening, you know, we had individual training, so it was just nonstop running. Nobody liked it. It was yeah. hot, Houston heat, 90 degrees, 50%, 60% humidity. So it was rough. I mean, I think our training staff did a, a very good job in keeping us fit. I mean, everybody hit it. I think it was worse than preseason, honestly. Yeah. Uh, so it was tough, but you know now we're back in the rhythm of things and, and back to the grind. And we have like two weeks of full training pass by, and, and I think it's good, you know, to be able to be with teammates, you know, have a good mm-hmm. laugh. Obviously, yeah. taking the right measures, we have to wear masks and mm-hmm. and be precaution in, in what we do now. We can't have five players inside of the gym and five, you know, it's yeah. you know a lot of things that we got to go by. And then it's, you know, it's the new norm right now. Um, hopefully it ends soon and, and hopefully we get fans in, in stadiums so we can play in front of them. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and you mentioned new coach, Todd Ramos, uh, U.S. soccer legend. What's it like just kind of getting some tutelage from, from a guy like that? Yeah, I mean, it's great. I think he's trying to bring a new, bring that culture back that the Houston mm-hmm. Dynamo had back in the day when they won their MLS Cup championship yeah. back to back. Um, I think he's doing a great job from, trying to get everybody from the Dynamo Academy to the RGB Toros to the first team, make it an easy transition and have everybody on the same page, um, knowing that the first team's doing it this way and the Toros are doing it this way and the Academy, they're all on the same way. And I think it's going to be easier for guys in the Academy, you know, for that pathway mm-hmm. um, to make it to the first team and that transition, make it easier. Obviously, it's not going to be easy because it's at the end of the day, you know, the, a 16-year-old kid comes into the first team Training obviously you're nice and stuff, yeah. but when training happens, you know you gotta you gotta show them why yeah. why you guys are here, mm-hmm. uh, why why the players are here, and and just you know give them a little eye opener how things will be if they make it to the first team. Yeah, and so so let's kind of switch switch things uh, to to your personal life. I saw that uh, you made the announcement you're expecting a baby boy. Uh, what was kind of going through your mind when <laughs> when you got the news, especially right before Father's Day, right? So. Uh, what, what what was going through your mind when when, when uh, you first got that? Yeah, super super excited. I mean, everybody says you know, get your sleep now, get your game in <laughs> now. Yeah. Uh, um, but you have other people saying you know, don't take that advice because every baby's different. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So so I in some way both both um, advices are good. You know, you yeah. never know mm-hmm. if the baby's gonna be crying at night. He's gonna yeah. be able to yeah. sleep. I'm um, no, but I'm super excited. Um, me and my girlfriend, we're, we got the, um, the envelope like two weeks before Father's Day or a week wow. and a half. Wow. And we wanted to open it. We wanted to open yeah. it. So, I, I mean, I think we would open it. I was in training. She was at home. Um, so she didn't open it. And thankfully, our neighbors do festival stuff like parties and oh, stuff okay, like that. Cool. So we gave them the envelope <laughs> and they did that for us. Um, so it was a special moment for me, my girlfriend and, and her family that made it. And we didn't make a big reveal because we knew that. During these tough times, obviously, I don't want to risk yeah. us getting. Yeah, I mean, yeah, if yeah. I get if I get tested positive, then I have to take 14 days off, and then you know, I can't go to Orlando or or mm-hmm. I got to do mm-hmm. other stuff. Yeah. Um. So it was basically just my mom, her mom, and her dad, um, and just two other of my best friends, and that's it. And you know, to share that moment with them, it's you know, it's great. You know, 
can't wait till the baby comes. Yeah. Um, she's due in December 5th. So wow. great, great time to, to um, have a baby, I guess. Yeah. Because uh, yeah. probably nothing, nothing's going to go on. So hopefully mm -hmm. if I don't get any sleep, I don't have to wake up for training yeah. <laughs> early in the morning. So yeah. it's going to be yeah. great. Yeah. So uh, are you going to be that parent who kind of spoils their child, you know, get them whatever they want, or are you going to give them some tough love? <laughs> Man, I think I think a little bit of both. Mm. Um, I think my mom, my mom was, you know, a little bit strict that strict on me and gave me that tough love. Yeah. But at the same time, she spoiled me not to the ex max to the extreme yeah, where yeah. you know I always got what I wanted. Mm. But you know, when things were needed, then I got them. But we say that now, you know, we're not gonna spoil them. But you know, it's your first one, and you never know how you're gonna act yeah, or react yeah. in front of them. So. I'm going to try to plan to have that little tough love in, in between. So have a little balance of both. All right, cool, man. So now we're going to trans, uh, transition into a rapid fire round. So I'm going to shoot okay. off a bunch of questions, put you on the hot cool. seat for a little bit, and then cool. uh, we'll, we'll wrap things up. So uh, you mentioned that you're were, you were staying in shape during the quarantine. What was your, your go-to quarantine workout? Um, I think just running around the park, honestly, just running around the park. Mm -hmm. uh, have the dog run around a little bit and and my girlfriend just watch it so uh really it was it sucked but you know i had to do it because you know we had to get prepared for whenever the season did come back yeah and i uh, probably had a lot of downtime going on was was there any uh guilty pleasure netflix binges or anything out of the ordinary that you were doing uh to, to kind of fill that downtime no i think uh i played a lot of video games <laughs> i have a twitch channel so i was streaming a little bit uh, so to have a little interaction with fans, yeah, um, because obviously you know fans make the stadium and, mm -hmm. and they bring that environment to the stadium and just try to have a little bit of connection with them with the community. I'm streaming a video game, you know, it's just, it's a little nerdy, but you know yeah. it has that that little interaction with them. Hey man, that's not nerdy anymore. Man. That that that's nah. so huge. Like you get yeah, you get it's getting bigger. Yeah. yeah, and it's getting bigger. Yeah, uh, so you know, kind of transitioning into that, you're a big gamer. Uh, what's the best video game out right now? Um, Call of Duty, I think. Uh, Call of Duty, the Warzone, Warzone for sure. And uh, Xbox, the new Xbox uh, Series One and the PS Five just got announced. What are you? What are your allegiances with right now uh, in the early on days? Uh, I would say Xbox, but I like I tell all my my teammates. They say, "What are you gonna get?" I'm like, I'm saving up for a baby now. I can't. I'm sticking to my Xbox One right now. I'm not going to spend 800 bucks on a, on a gaming system right now. Um, but if if I do get one, it might be the Xbox. Um, just because I always had Xbox on my life and I've had a PS4, but Xbox was always my my first go to. Hey, you got to put that on the uh, on the baby shower registry. The, the yeah, registry exactly. Spot. You know, you got yeah, to groom sure. you got to groom the kid uh, into yeah. the video game world early on, right? <laughs> for sure. All right, and so the last question, just to, to finish things off, um, last time we spoke, you know, you mentioned you're a big hip-hop head. Um, Houston, obviously, iconic city in the, in the, in the world of hip-hop. Uh, so I'm going to give you three uh, Houston artists, and you got to start one, bench one, cut one. Okay. All right, so um, you got Mike Jones, Paul Wall, and UGK. Start one, bench one, cut one. Oh, I'm starting UGK for sure. Um... That's the right yeah. answer, though. That, that just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just to make things yeah, clear, that's yeah, the right yeah, answer. Yeah, for sure. I, it just, that's starter, no question. Um, I would say Mike Jones, number two, as my bench, and I would have to call Paul. Oh, it's tough, 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 tough call. Tough, tough, yeah, for but, sure. Uh, I, I think either way, you know, you, you can't go wrong with, with that. For sure. Yeah. All right, Memo, thanks for joining us. Really appreciate it. Um, any last kind of shout outs that you want to give? No, I mean, I think appreciate you for having me. Obviously, hopefully you and your family are safe and healthy. Um, just everybody stay home as, as much as you can. I'm um, during these tough times. You see big spikes going on right now. So I think if we take care of each other, you know, we'll be fine and we can flatten the curve. Yeah. Awesome, man. Um, all right. Just to sign off. I'm Ramsey Abushala. For Memo Rodriguez, thanks for tuning in, and we'll catch you next time.